Good morning. Good morning, Geschwister. You are connected to the Ebenezer Mennonite Church of Abbotsford. Welcome, friends, brothers, and sisters. If you are connected to Jesus Christ, then you are not longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizen with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Today we celebrate Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit to all flesh. Today we worship together as the people of God who meet at Windsor and Marshall here in Abbotsford. We worship in different languages, yet in the same spirit. We are different congregations, yet one church. I will now read from Acts chapter 2 in German, and then I'll pray. Shortly after, the same text will be read in English. Heute feiern wir das Kommen des Heiligen Geistes. Gott lebt jetzt in uns durch seinen Geist. Das befähigt uns auch heute, ihn anzubeten in Wahrheit und im Geist. Herzlich willkommen zu diesem Pfingstgottesdienst. Ich lese uns nun Gottes Wort aus Apostelgeschichte, Kapitel 2, die Verse 17 bis 21. Und es soll geschehen in den letzten Tagen, spricht Gott, da will ich ausgießen von meinem Geist auf alles Fleisch, und eure Söhne und eure Töchter sollen weissagen, und eure Jünglinge sollen Gesichte sehen, und eure Alten sollen Träume haben, und auf meine Knechte und auf meine Mägde will ich in jenen Tagen von meinem Geist ausgießen, und sie sollen weissagen. Und ich will Wunder tun oben am Himmel und Zeichen unten auf Erden, Blut und Feuer und Rauchdampf. Die Sonne soll in Finsternis und der Mond in Blut verwandelt werden, ehe der große Tag der Offenbarung des Herrn kommt. Und es soll geschehen, wer den Namen des Herrn anrufen wird, der soll gerettet werden. Dies ist Gottes Wort. Lasst uns beten. Let us pray. Gracious God, holy, holy, holy is your name. And you have come near to us. I pray for each one of us who are, is involved in prepping this worship service, and each one of us who participates by listening and watching and praying. Thank you that you are present, and I ask you, gracious God, in Jesus' name, that your Holy Spirit, whose coming we celebrate today, may touch and encourage, heal and reveal your saving grace to our friend who is connected now through the electronic communication with us and with you. Bless this service, gracious God. We long to worship you. We love you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever and ever. Amen.
When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speak in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all of these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to, to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We heard them declaring the, word, the words of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jer Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what, what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in, in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. to greet to uh, people. Uh, God bless everyone. So i glad to be take a part of this uh, like celebration or thinking about the day uh, Pentecost day. So for joy with the worship of uh, this uh, day, i like to read the Bible from the act chapter 1 1 to 8 the first account I composed Theophilus about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven after he had by the Holy Spirit 
given orders to the apostle whom he had chosen. Verse 3. To this he also present himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Catering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, You hear up from me. Verse 5. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, it is that time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel. He said to them, it is not for you to know time or epoch which the Father has fixed by his own authority. And verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witness, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. It is the some story of about Pentecost. So we like to thinking and here maybe to remind about the long story ago. So at this uh, special worship or day, I like to have some short prayer. But because our story on the uh, Pentecost, that time when Holy Spirit coming down, and uh, there were with people, and all many nations, they, they understand, they hear what Apostle talking. And even quite many nations that's Thai in Jerusalem. So I like to pray in Laos or Laotian speaking today. Yes, I like to pray for, yes, it is our home here, even the Zerbinana Church and all uh, elder sister and pastor at all men and I in Canada and on the world. And yes, I like to pray for uh, our brother, sister, Christian in the world too. Like uh, we have a uh, uh, condemic, uh, we have an uh, uncertain time, like right now about COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So may God help us to be close to him and also to be help us to be encourage, take time to be Tell people about good news. So I like to take this time, pray. You may join with us too, with me too. Satokan Pajau Kong Kapaong, Pajau Pavida, Pabut Laka Ong, Pavinan Borisut. Payasu Joe, Pokapong, Salasen, Kapokun Pong, so sweet can be you, Papon took young, Signam Papo Kapong. Nathan, Ni Kapong, Kotitan, Hong Tun Topong, Pinpise, Pong Joe. เนื่องจากระลึกถึงวันเพนติคอสต์ขอพระองค์เริ่มต้นจากบูธหลังนี้ซึ่งเป็นบ่อนพ่อค้าพระองค์ไซเพื่อนมัสการถวายเกียรติ
อยู่ที่ฝรั่งอยู่ที่อังกฤษอยู่ที่อิสราเอลแล้วก็อยู่ที่อิตาลีอยู่ที่โรมอยู่ที่รัสเซียเยอรมนีแอนลาวไทยคาเมนเวียดนามแล้วก็อธิษฐานเพื่ออยู่ชายนิสของเจ้าแล้วก็คิดถึงพี่น้องโกเรียญี่ปุ่นจะเจเปนิสแล้วก็เมาเลเซียแล้วก็รวมไปถึงออสเตรเลียพวกเจ้าเอ้ยพวกเรานี่ก็รอคอยการสืยเหลือจากพระองค์ทรงโปรดถือในโอกาสดังกล่าวซึ่งโลกแพ้พายนายานกลัวของโควิด -19 ขอได้ทรงโปรดปกป้องคุ้มครองเพื่อพักรักษาสลับภูมีเจ็บไข้ได้ป่วยหรือเป็นพญานี่ก็ขอการปิ่นป่วยจากพวกเจ้าสลับภูซึ่งยังอยู่ดีไม่แห้งก็ขอได้ทรงโปรดประทานความมากความเสือ่อให้ทุกคนไหลเข้ามาสนเพิงในหมประคุณในฤทธิเดชของพวงเจ้าและก็สวยโอกาสเป่าประกาศชัดธรรมในโซโอกาสซึ่งวิกฤตดังกล่าวนี้สำหรับโอกาสนี้ข้าพระองค์ก็ทูลขอห่วมกับพี่น้องผู้ห่วมกันกับพวกข้าพระองค์ในทูลต่อพระองค์ในพระนามองค์พระเยซูเจ้าอาเมน God bless you all thank you Ebenezer Mennonite Church. My name is Steve Clausen, and I serve as the pastor at Abbotsford Community Church. Uh, I've been a little bit about myself. I've been married to Lisa for almost six years now, and we have two daughters: s e l a who is going to be four next month, and Aria, who's going to be two later this August. I'm originally from Manitoba, uh, born and raised there, and my wife is from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I'd love to tell you more about how we came to be in BC and how we met one another, but that is a story for another time. This morning, I'm going to be sharing with you a, a testimony, a testimony of God's timing, of God's faithfulness and provision on both a personal level and on behalf of that of, of ACC. I've been a part of ACC for three and a half years, but before coming to ACC, I had never heard of it. You go back to the fall of 2016, and I was in my fifth year as the residence director at Columbia Bible College. It was a job, a community, and a team that I deeply loved. But I was in a job that I knew wasn't possible to do forever, and so I was aware that this could be my final year at CBC. God was preparing me for something else. I just had no idea what or when that would take shape. On an October night, I attended a student-led event that was focused on listening prayer. I myself just went to be a support to the students, but by the end of the night, I would leave having the course of my life changed. In our groups, we took turns listening to God for words. For pictures for each other, 
And when it came time for these students to share what they had heard from me, there were two girls whose words struck me to the core. One girl said she heard the word father, which that has a nice sentiment to it. But at the time, Lisa and I were not parents, nor were we, nor were we expecting children. So I just took that, tucked it away for a later time. The next girl just said the words, it's time. Now you might think that's a direct correlation to being a parent. That didn't strike a chord with me in, in that regard. But those words, it's time, was that instant just knowing in my soul it was time to move on from CBC. Time to move on from something that I loved and that God was inviting me into something different. When I heard those words, it's time, I have never been so certain of something in my life. I went home that night and told Lisa, and she agreed. The next morning, yes, just the next morning, that other word that was spoken over me, father, came to fruition. Lisa found out she was pregnant. We were not expecting this at all, and it was an incredible, joyful occasion. God, in his perfect timing, was calling me out of a place I loved and all at once fulfilled a desire of my heart. And I love the fact that he did it in that order. He called me out and fulfilled that desire of being a father. Fast forward to the spring of 2017 and the school year has ended and I was on a constant search for jobs, but I haven't found anything yet. My job at CBC required me to live on campus, and so by leaving the job, I was also leaving a home. We were only a couple of months away from expecting our first child. I had to move on to a new job, a new home. I was about to be unemployed, a father, and I was about to be homeless in a way. So the question, God, what is your plan in all of this? As my job search began to turn frantic, we met with an older couple to pray with them. And as they prayed, they said, Steve, your next job is going to come through relationship. I stopped looking for jobs that night. And just a couple of weeks later, another fellow I had worked with at CBC uh, approached me. He said he was on the pastoral search team. And as he was praying, my name came to mind. This was a total shock to me. I wasn't looking for a pastoral job. In fact, I was looking for anything but that. I thought I needed a break from ministry. I hadn't preached in seven years. I don't consider myself uh, an overly gifted evangelist. And it was 10 years since I had done any sort of formal schooling. What does God see in me that he called me to be a pastor? Well, God had all of that covered. A core value of ACC is developing young leaders. And they weren't concerned that I had limited preaching experience, only that I was willing to learn and grow as they've been gracious. And they've been gracious as I've developed. Also, they were willing to pay for me to enroll in a master's program at seminary. God, one by one, was removing any doubts and excuses and was providing for me through the people of ACC. So I left my job at CBC with nothing certain in the works. I paused my job search, even though it felt somewhat irresponsible. And now I was being invited to candidate to be a pastor, which was something I felt was way over my head. My life was becoming a lesson the Israelites had learned thousands of years ago. That sometimes in order to receive all that God has for us, we need to trust him and take our feet off of that dry, solid ground we're standing on and step into deeper waters. By this, I'm referring to the moment the Israelites crossed the Jordan River in Joshua chapter 3. And I'll read a short excerpt from there. It's Joshua 3, starting at verse 13. 
And when the soles of the feet of the priests bearing the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing. And the waters coming down from above shall stand in one heap. So when the people set out from their tents to pass over the Jordan, with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as soon as those bearing the Ark had come as far as the Jordan, and the, and the feet of the priests bearing the Ark were dipped in the brink of the water, the waters coming down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far away. This event happened because the, the people, the Israelite people, were obedient to what God had commanded. And they believed in his promise to bring them into the land. God made it possible because his presence was with them, as represented by the Ark of the Lord. Just last year, Abbotsford Community Church was faced with uncertainty regarding our future. We knew God had something new for us, but we didn't know where, how, or what that would look like, or when it would all unfold. See, the demographics of our congregation were shifting, uh, which necessitated a change in our service style and discipleship model. Our former meeting space in MEI no longer met the needs of our congregation, and so we began to explore other options. The arrival of COVID fast-tracked our search. And much like my job hunt, we looked everywhere for a new facility and entertained several models of how to gather. But nothing was the right fit. After a season of Zoom church, which we are in once again, and several outdoor services, the elders sensed God inviting us to approach Ebenezer and inquire about becoming tenants. We were delighted to hear that Ebenezer's leadership was eager to make this work and that God had already been stirring some things in their heart as well. It didn't take long to iron out the details and draw up a rental agreement. God is faithful. He is our provider. His timing is perfect. And he invites us to trust him to leave our safe, dry ground and step in, into deeper waters. Now, it's far easier to remain on that safe, dry ground, or even to convince ourselves that stepping in with one foot is enough. But doing so means we will never receive all that God has promised for us. You see, the waters don't recede, and the promised land isn't opened until both feet are in the water. This is the harder path and often the scarier option. But as I've discovered in my life and for that of ACC, as we step in with both feet and trust God's leading, we will encounter the richness and goodness of all that he has for us. I'm now in an office that is delightful to work out of, and I'm blessed to be in proximity to the Ebenezer staff. And once restrictions are lifted, we will have a facility that meets our needs and enables our community to connect, engage, and worship together. On behalf of Abbotsford Community Church, I want to thank you, Ebenezer, for opening your doors and your hearts to us. I look forward to the new ways we can support one another and partner together in building God's kingdom and in sharing the gospel. May God bless you. Let us pray. Jesus, only 10 days after going back to the Father, the Father sent us the Comforter. Holy Spirit came down on an ordinary day in a most amazing way in a house where believers were gathered and waiting. People from distant lands of many languages also were gathered in Jerusalem. They too witnessed the Spirit's gentle but powerful appearance. Unlike then, today we find ourselves scattered throughout the city of Abbotsford. 
in homes, care homes, hospitals, of all ages, the strong and the weak, the healthy and sick, rich or poor, lonely or visited. We wonder about the returning to the old normal. Oh, how we need you every hour. Or, Holy Spirit, what do you have in mind for us, whether we are gathered or live scattered? Is it a new normal of renewed relationships with you, with one another, other believers, and many newcomers to faith? We too have come from distant lands, many from Europe, Lao Christian Church from Asia, Abbot's Heart Community Church from around town, and the little Alpacas childcare family from our neighborhood. Jesus, we thank you for letting us experience your diversity here at Ebenezer. And thank you for unity of purpose to live out the Father's will among us by the power of the Holy Spirit as our guide and comforter. Jesus, we confess we are unable to revive and renew ourselves, so we humbly pray. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with life anew, that we may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. That we today may experience a Pentecost in complete harmony with your spirit-filled new normal, better than any normal of the past. This we pray in your name, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. Throughout history, people have looked to the stars. Literally and figuratively, people looked at the heavens and they drew pictures between the stars. And also people looked up wondering, what's up there? Who's up there? How do I talk to them? And probably the most important question for them, how do I get them on my side? And so people have sought out the supernatural. They wanted to better their lives, more money, better crops, protection from harm, fertility. They wanted to expand their territory and get more land, have a bigger army, more influence. And they wanted protection from illness and disease, famine, raiders, war. There's a very, very basic understanding that supernatural beings have more power, more insight than we do, and that there's something up there that could solve our problems down here. So we have... Uh, uh, industries that have actually developed around this. We have witch doctors and soothsayers, oracles, prophets. We call them by different names in our time, but they still exist. We want to find experts who can tell us how to hear what the spirits are saying and how to get the spirits on our side. So in history, we see kings, queens, generals, emperors seeking out Gnostic information, esoteric, mystic knowledge, just like people do today. And we do see this reflected in the Bible. The prophet Samuel is sought out as a seer to find some missing livestock, some missing donkeys in 1 Samuel 9. That was Saul that was looking for him. Later on, same King Saul consults the witch of Endor in 1 Samuel 28. Again, trying to get information about the future, things they don't know. In Acts 16, we see the Apostle Paul cast out a spirit of divination from a slave girl in Philippi. The entire Bible itself really is revealed esoteric knowledge. Though we believe that it is the real thing, the true revelation of God, and not the money-making schemes of human authors trying to sell the idea of hidden knowledge that nobody else can have. The Bible is available for anyone. Anybody can find out about God and can find out his plans. And the Bible reveals that God not only speaks to people, but that his spirit, the Holy Spirit, can rest on people as well. In the Old Testament, we see this happen to many biblical heroes with some pretty spectacular results. Samson is granted incredible strength. He rips off a massive steel uh, and solid wood door. And then he doesn't just rip it off its moorings. He carries it up a hill and puts it down just to make a point that nothing can contain him. Elijah is given superhuman speed. He outruns a horse-driven chariot. Gideon, Deborah, many others achieve impossible military victories. Exactly the kind of supernatural power that rulers have sought throughout history. And in each of these examples, the Holy Spirit temporarily dwells in people to give them the power to achieve specific things. But then the Holy Spirit departs. But the prophet Joel foresaw something different happening. 
And in Joel chapter 2, verse 28, we read this. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It's an incredible prophecy. This outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is foretold, it's going to be different. The Holy Spirit is going to rest on people, sealing them, empowering them, guiding them, getting them ready to do God's work before the day of judgment comes. Because it is coming. And so God's people are going to be sent out into the world so that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, this is something Joel is looking forward to. But for us, this is something that has already happened. And we look back to it several hundred years after Joel. But 2,000 years ago for us, in Jerusalem, during the Jewish Festival of Weeks in Greek Pentecost, we read in Acts chapter 2, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The Holy Spirit comes upon them with visible and audible power. It, it sounds like a, like a special effects scene from a movie, swirling wind, lights, and sound. And the Holy Spirit comes down as a central flame and then separates into smaller flames that rest on each person. And immediately, each of these recipients of the Holy Spirit gains the ability to explain to people from other cultures, from other languages, with different idioms and little, little colloquialisms, to talk to them perfectly about who Jesus is and the offer of salvation that is available to them, that they have the chance, that all people have the chance to be saved. And of course, this draws a crowd. And Peter goes on to give an incredible sermon explaining to all of the startled witnesses what has happened. Verse 37. When the people heard this, so they're responding to what they've seen and what Peter has just said. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promise of is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Just as the Lord had revealed to the prophet Joel, the Holy Spirit was poured out. The message of salvation was spread, and people's lives were changed dramatically. They were transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that dwells in you and I. It rests on us, sealing us with salvation, giving us confidence in what Jesus has done. It empowers us to be transformed and to go out and accomplish God's work in and around us. So what does this look like? This thing that you and I should be incredibly thankful for and centered on and empowered by. What does it look like? Well, here's what the new believers looked like. First of all, truth. The new believers were focused on learning truth. They listened and studied and grew. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. This is important because there's ideas everywhere. But now with the Holy Spirit in us, we can discern the truth. We can learn the truth 
Focus on it and make sure that that is what we are spreading on to others. Not gossip, not rumors, not speculation, not all of our opinions. Not that opinions are bad, it's just it's not the same thing as truth. And in every believer's life, there should be a clear distinction about the confidence we have in truth and the lesser confidence we have in our own opinions. And yet for many of us, it's the opposite way around. We're so strong, we're so stubborn, obstinate about our opinions, and we pull back on truth because we assume it's shared. That's not true. Truth is not shared in our time. And so a person who has the Holy Spirit dwelling in them should have a clear sense, not only is there truth, not only can I know truth, but that the Holy Spirit will show truth to me that I can hold on to and lift up stronger than anything else that I say or think or do. The new believers with the Holy Spirit focused on truth. Here's the second thing, transformation. They confessed their sins and they had a burden lifted off of them. And so they became filled with joy. And not only were they filled with joy, they became generous and selfless with one another. They shared incredibly well. They cherished one another. They fellowshiped with one another. They prayed together. They worshiped God unhindered. And everybody who saw them saw the transformation. They saw what they were like before and what they are now. A massive, massive revelation of the power of the Holy Spirit is the transformation of the person that he dwells in. Obviously, only if we'll listen to him. Having the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that our free will is axed or paused or put to one side, but now we have a resource unlike any other, God dwelling in us, guiding us and leading us, if that is what we want. If we want to be saved, if we want to focus on the truth, if we want to be transformed. So truth Transformation, and here's the third thing we see right off the bat, openness. The new believers were open and enthusiastic about what happened to them, letting others see their fellowship and love for one another. Remember, before Pentecost, they were hiding. They were in hiding. They were on the down low. But with the Holy Spirit, they were filled with this humility, but boldness. They did not care who saw them because that was part of the point. The people could see what it was like. I have the Holy Spirit in me. Can you tell? You could have the Holy Spirit in you too. It's not a sales pitch. It's the revelation of truth and transformation. And it's open that other people can see it. They went into the temple courts, praising God. People were in awe of the miracles and they enjoyed the favor of all the people. They enjoyed the favor of the people because the people could see what was actually happening and going on. You can't enjoy the favor of the people if you are a hidden subgroup that they don't even know about. That doesn't make sense. So we go on to read in the book of Acts about the many miracles that the Holy Spirit does in his people. Incredible healings, casting out demons, doing the physically and spiritually impossible. And, and we hope for those things. But we do not wield this kind of power on demand. As if we could say magical incantations and move our hands in a certain way and, and the Holy Spirit has to do what we want when we want it, like he's a tool. Now the frustrating story of Simon Magus in Acts 8 reveals that the Holy Spirit cannot and will not be used as a power source for human ambition, that he's not there to make our dreams come true. So. While we, the modern day bearers of the Holy Spirit, pray and long for huge visible miracles, particularly healing, let us remain focused on what the Holy Spirit does in us consistently. That's where we need to put the majority of our focus, hoping for other things, but knowing this is what we are called to do every single day. Truth, transformation, openness. That's what Pentecost is about. That's why we celebrate it every year. And that's why this year, as we think about Pentecost, even in these very strange circumstances, we realize nothing has changed in the mission we've been given from the Holy Spirit. Truth, transformation, openness. May the Holy Spirit dwell in us richly, transforming us and changing us, and let us find joy as we follow him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we pray that we would not squander his presence in our lives, blocking him out, putting him in a box, not letting him be in control. Father, we realize that we must actively use our will to follow you. So we pray, Father, for the seamless and joyful marriage between our will and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we pray that you would fill us with joy as you teach us truth, transform our lives, and help us to be open to our neighbors around us. We thank you that this is your work and that through us, Father, you are working to save all people, that all people could be saved. We thank you and we give you all the glory. We pray this in your name. Amen. Son, and we
Segne dich. The Lord bless you. Und der Herr behüte dich. The Lord keep you. Der Herr lasse sein Antlitz leuchten. The Lord make his face shine on you. Und sei dir gnädig. And be gracious to you. Der Herr erhebe sein Angesicht auf dir. The Lord turn his face toward you. Und schenke dir seinen göttlichen Frieden. And give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.